Morning, welcome to today's Garage Cricket. Obviously, it's a smashing day outside for batting. We get, we can't get out in the middle, but hopefully we can continue to develop our batting skills uh, from home. So whether it be the garden, the garage, the bedroom, whatever it is, try and create some kind of batting exercise today. In this video, we're going to be setting up a cream egg challenge towards the back end, and we're going to be focusing on driving off the front foot throughout this video. Today I'm going to be using a foam ball because I think that's going to create the right type of feed uh, that is going to allow us to play plenty of drives off the front foot but use whatever equipment you can to get your batting done. So first of all then, this is going to link back to uh, the first, very first video that we did. We're looking here today at vertical bat paths. So the bat coming through like that. And as we said, it's a front foot shot. So we want to be getting out to the ball onto your front foot into a lunge position, which means for me as a right hander, it is the foot nearest the bowler. So my left foot that comes to the bowler. If you are a left hander, it would be your right foot coming to the bowler. So the first part of this video, we're interested in making good contact and being able to hit the ball to different parts of the field. So we're looking at hitting through the offside, hitting an off drive or cover drive, straight drives and on drives and how the technique differs slightly. So let's have a look at some of them in action here. So there's my off drive or my cover drive. This here is my straight drive. And finally, we've got my on drive. Oh, that's not a good feed. I can't play an on drive from there. Or there. And through there. So we've got three basic types of drive for you to try and copy um, and try and mimic those shapes. So in terms of important things, as I just move the camera over here and pop it down there like that. So you see me here in my stance. One of the problems that a lot of young cricketers I coach have or I see on the circuit is that as they play, the back foot drags or moves and they're no longer in a balanced position. So what we want to see as you play this shot, that back foot, so for me my right foot, as I play this shot and I get out to the ball, it just pivots onto the toe, onto the side of the toe, whichever feels most comfortable for you. So if it's the off drive, I get there. If it's a straight drive, I get there. If it's the on drive, I get there. And the whole time that foot stays balanced in that position and that will allow me to get more power and recruit the muscles in my legs by being in that balanced position. Now as you see the front foot should go towards the target. So if I want to hit towards the offside it goes out towards the offside. If I want to hit straight it should go to the ball straight and if I want to hit to the onside. Now this is where it's slightly different. We kind of have a half step to just open the body up. We don't want to have the full big step. It's just a little half step getting that uh, body weight nice and balanced and pointing in the direction we want to hit the ball. So hopefully if we go back into our examples over here you'll be able to see that happening as follows. So you see how I get nice and balanced and there I hit through the offside into the covers, my toe is pointing towards the cover region and the vertical bat path came straight through it. There I hit through the onside You'll notice that I've kind of had that little half mini step we talked about to open the body up and it allowed the vertical back through there. And for my straight drive, everything is pointing towards the target. Now, other things that might help us here as I move the camera one more time. So the grip is very, very important. And now one of the things we spoke about in the first video was the idea if your bottom hand, so for me as a right hander, is too tight, the bat starts to turn and you don't present the full bat face. If you see as I hit this ball here, my right hand, there's actually kind of a gap in there. Now, Adam Gilchrist in a World Cup final very famously uh, put half a ping pong ball 
in there to ensure his bottom hand wasn't dominant. So as you can see, I've just popped that ping pong ball in there. And by having it and holding it in there, that means that my back path comes through straight. You can see the ping pong ball in there because it is the top hand that does the work. So if you are struggling to get good contact, you might want to just focus on with your top hand. Can you see, so the right hand is behind my back, my bottom hand here, that back just going straight through the target. Lovely. So, there we have our different types of drive. Uh, now, can we put it into our challenge that we were talking about? Now, I'm just gonna move us over here. Um, so I thought, what's the best way of developing this, getting us to hit the ball down into the ground, developing control? And I'm going to introduce uh, a nice little cream egg challenge. The cream egg challenge. And remember, if you haven't got cream eggs at home, just be creative uh, with what you use. Please stay at home and do not go out specifically to get cream eggs. Uh, I've also created, uh, as I just dropped one on the floor, uh, some little egg holders. I cut out my, from my egg box. They're going to act as my mounts. And I'm going to use something else that means a lot to me as my targets today I got my Harry Potter books uh, in play so there we are perched up there I've got my cream eggs uh, the Harry Potter books work really well because there's seven of them and I think maybe five to seven is an appropriate target for you so if I just pop us down over here you can see the uh, the circuit is all set up so over here you've got the Philosopher's Stone all the way around to the Deathly Hallows so those are my targets and we are going to be here batting from this position throw against the wall out and you're trying to drive those cream eggs off their target. And isn't it great? You knock it off a target, you get a nice tasty cream egg. So there's a number of ways you can play this game. Uh, one way might be to play it as a penalty shootout. If you've got someone else to play with, you take it in turns and you earn your, uh, your cream eggs that way. Uh, you might do it uh, as I'm going to do it, which is you've got unlimited balls and you're going to work your way around. And the number, so the total of balls it takes you to complete the seven books, uh, is your score. It may be you just give yourself ten balls. How many can I knock down uh, in ten balls? Or if you want to be really, really advanced, you might have to work your way through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in order as opposed to knocking them down. So for me, obviously, I would have to start off by knocking down the first book, Philosopher's Stone, then the Chamber of Secrets. Now, choose whichever one you think uh, is the best for you uh, and have plenty of fun with it. Uh, my example follows now. Okay, so successful. Target number one, Philosopher's Stone. A nice little on drive. Just clipped the egg off the top there. Oh, I've just gone over the top of the Chamber of Secrets. Through the middle that time, I think. Excellent. Oh, I've managed to get two down in one attempt there. So off we go. Alright, that there takes the Order of the Phoenix out of things. Oh, I've just missed the Deathly Hallows. So obviously we're looking here at trying to pick the appropriate ball. I've hit it, but it's not fallen off. The appropriate ball to target the appropriate book. How's he missed it? It's right there. That's better, he's gone. So I've got two books left, the Half-Blood Prince and the Goblet of Fire. As you can see, that box has taken a bit of a battery over the last few days. There we go, nice, I've got one to go, the Goblet of Fire. The straight drive, and there he is. So, that there is my uh, cream egg challenge completed. So, to finish off today, just a couple more coaching things that may help you out. The first one is looking at this idea that the bat should come down right next to that front leg, so that there's no gap between the bat and the pad, and that reduces your chance of getting bowled, and also means that if you're going to get into that habit there, your eyes are right over the top of the ball, which will help you with contact. I tend to see, uh, especially in the early years, uh, people, when they play this shot, they want to try and give themselves room to play out there, almost like they're playing uh, golf. Not what we want here, because that there creates this big gap that the ball can go through. We want to see nice and compact the bat next to the pad. So really, you can do exactly as I'm doing here, just filming yourself, 
and just making sure uh, that when I play my straight batted shots, the bat comes through right next to the pad and that there's no gap there. So you can easily look back at that. Um, the second thing you can do is you can switch to a tennis ball. This is a good challenge here because the tennis ball bounces a little bit more, which means it's more difficult for you to get over top of the ball. And you might have seen there, to get on top of that one, I had to get up onto that front toe to allow me to elevate my hands. So on bouncy pitches in um, South Africa, Australia and so on, you may need to be able to do this. And obviously if you can play a drive to a good length ball, that will really help to mess up uh, the bowler because uh, they think they're bowling good deliveries and you're still able to attack them. So that's a good challenge uh, for you if you think you mastered that. If on the other hand, you want to maybe work on the footwork, a very simple thing you can do. So we spoke about getting your foot to the pitch of the ball and keeping that back foot nice and still in the position it is, but just pivoting onto the toe. You can just feed it up against the wall and wherever the ball goes, oh no, wherever the ball goes, you go and get your hands out towards it, yes? And that just helps get your head closer, more chance of contact. You can really work on that onside, the little half step we spoke about, and trying to get um, into a nice balanced position. Hopefully all of those uh, are gonna help you. Uh, happy hitting and see you tomorrow.